All right. Uh, good morning. Today's daf is Nadarim Membez. We are going to start at the Mishnah right at the top of the daf, and we'll actually round the corner to Mendima Wamadal if we get to the Mishnah there. Nice daf today. Nice. Nice daf. And they all are. Mishnah. Mm-hmm. So anybody who prohibits his friend from having any Hana from him before Shvius, this doesn't necessarily mean just year six. But any year prior to Shemitah, he's not allowed to go into his field. The Ran Rashi, others explain, because it is an issue of Dresas Regal, even stepping foot in somebody's property, if you are prohibited from having Hana from them, is Asr. Is and he is not allowed to eat from the, from the fruit that hangs over the border of that individual's field. So imagine an apple tree with branches hanging over the fence. You're not allowed to eat from those because uh, that is obviously Hana. It's not Shviz now, exactly. It's not Shviz now when he makes the nether. So it's Hefker. Uve Shviz. Eno Yore the Tzokhsadeu. The Tanakama says that when it, that when, now you're still under the nether that was made before Shviz. So under the netter made before Shvius and, Sh- and Shemitah rolls around, you're not allowed to go into his field. Even though uh, we'll get to this a little bit later on yeah. in the Gemara. The Bach, the Bach takes on the word Hanatios. But you are allowed to eat from the fruit that hangs over. Why? Hefker, because it doesn't belong to the Balabais anymore. Now, Nadar Hemenu Machal, the first case in the Mishnah, was a mother hana This case in the seifa, another himenu ma'achal. What if, what if one uh, prohibits the other via neder from having his food lifne shviyis? So before shviyis, you're in the tochsadei of enochem in You are allowed to go into his field because he didn't say anything about not having general hana. He said not having ma'achal. But however, he's not allowed to eat from the peros uvish shviyis. But under that same neder. Once Shemitah rolls around, you are allowed to go into his field because Drisas Regal was not prohibited by the original neder. Because the food is mutter during Shemitah, Shviyas, because it is Hefker. Says the Gemara, six, seven lines down. Rav and Shmuel, Rav and Shmuel both say, now on these next two, three words, there are at least three different girsaos in the Gemara. The standard one that we have is nechasim elu alecha. These nechasim are usher to you. The bach, if you take a look at the bottom, the bach os beis says nechasai alecha kein tzarech lomar. This lashon, which will match the lashon we'll see in a moment by uh, Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish, the lashon is nechasai alecha. The os mem v'tevas elu nimcha, and the letter mem and the word elu is deleted. And that is also how Rashi reads this sugya. There is a third girsa that is nechasai elu. These of my possessions. So we're going to go with the Bach's reading. So Rabbi Shmuel Damri Tarvayu nechasai alecha. That in a case where somebody says my property is usher to you, lifne shviyis if that neder was made before shmita. Similar to what the Mishnah said in the, in, the, in the Resha, you're not allowed to go in, the person who is prohibited is not allowed to go into his friend's field, nor is he allowed to eat even from the payros that are hanging over the border to his property. And sorry, even though, and this is a more hammer position than the Mishnah took, even though Shavias rolls around. And if he made the neder during Shemitah, you are not allowed to go into his field, again, because it's an iser, an issue, and isur of Dresas Regel. But you are, because it's Shemitah and the food is Hefker, you are allowed to eat from the food that's hanging over. Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish have a different psaq in one aspect of this of this limud, and it is this one aspect that's going to take us uh, around the corner here. 
to Amud Beis. For Rabbi Yochan of Reish Vladish Tamar Tarvayu, they both hold the following. Nechasai Alecha, again, in the Bach's reading, this is now exactly the same mm-hmm. as what Rav and Shmuel said. My property is usher to you. If he makes a netter before Shvius, then in the time period before Shemitah, you are not allowed to go into his field and you are not allowed to eat from the notos, from the, the pears that are hanging over. However, but differently than the way Rabbi Shmuel Paskin, Rabbi Yochanan and Rish Lakish hold that when Shemitah rolls around, Yes, please. You are not allowed to go into his field again mm-hmm. because of Drisas Regel, Abel Ochil Huesa Notos, but you are allowed to eat the Peros. So now, the Gemara now is going to suggest a. Yes. So I don't know the answer to that, but in Shavius, the deal is that that, that, that ownership really doesn't matter because all of that all of those payros become ownerless automatically in shvius so theoretically actually we were with friends in modin they have a a, a pomelo tree in their backyard and during shvius somebody knocked on the door and said i know you have pomelos in your backyard can i come take one and the owner our friend what's the only answer yeah, not mine. of course it's not mine help yourself so i mean this was real life for for our, uh, our brothers and sisters in israel so the issue of notos, I can't speak to what it's like in a non-Shemitah year, and I can barely speak to what it's like in a Shemitah year. But Lema yeah. Baha Kamiflugi. So now the Gemara now is going to propose and then reject a possible basis for the difference of opinion between the Shita of Rabu Shmuel, who say that in a time of Shemitah, you are not allowed to eat from the notos, and Rabbi Yochanan and Rish Lakish, who say that Ochalhu es notos. So Lema Baha Kamiflugi. Is it possible that the root of this machlokis is the following? Did Rav and Shmuel say that a person has the power to prohibit something that is currently in his rishus, and that prohibition extends even to a time where it is no longer under his bias, it is no longer under his ownership, and that is why, according to the opinion of Rav and Shmuel, even when Shemitah rolls around. You're still not allowed um, to take from the notos. For Rabbi Yochanan Veresh Lakish Sabri. When we say notos, what do we refer to? We mean payros that you can access that belong to another person without going onto his property. Something that is nota is sort of hanging out. A natia means a lean. So something that is nota. So an apple tree is on my, on my property. You're walking down Sherwin. There are branches hanging over with fruit on it. The, those fruits are referred to as notos because they are extending out. They're hanging over off of my property and into either another, either some other rishos. They're not limited to rishos around versus rishos around. Um, well, if it's in rishos around, so by definition, it's ownerless. Right. But so, but if it went over to your neighbor on the other side, he can take it. I think. Okay. I think. But again, we're talking about a case of shmita. So what happens if? So, so it's all ownerless, but the, the reason that the, the reason that the Gemara and the Mishnah are dealing with Noto specifically is because you're never allowed to go into the field itself because you may have a not just with us right now. Mm-hmm. So that's why the Gemara and the Mishnah are, con- are continuing in the case of Notos. So is it possible that Rav and Shmuel hold that you have that a human being has the power to answer something that is currently in his Rishus, even when it leaves his Rishus? Thank you very much. For Rabbi Yochanan Reish Lakish Sabri and Rabbi Yochanan Reish Lakish hold, ain't Adam Osher Davar Shibir Rishuso, Lakish Yitzimir Rishuso, that a person does not have the power to answer something that is currently in his in his Rishus once it leaves his Rishus, and that's why they would say that in the case where you made the nether before Shmita, that once Shmita rolls around, someone else is out, allowed to eat that fruit because you no longer have the power to answer something that is automatically no longer in your possession, which is the case by Shemitah. Now, the Gemara is going to give two re- immediate rejections to this Mahalach, one based on logic and one based on a, an explicit proof from elsewhere in the Brisa. Here's the proof from logic. V'tizbara, how can you even suggest that a person is not allowed to answer something 
that later on will no longer be in his possession. Is there anybody who even holds that, that a human does not have the power to do that? Because if that's the case, then Rav and Shmuel should not only argue in a case of Nechasai, they should also argue in a case of Nechasim Elu. These, these specific items, which is stronger because you're not tying the prohibition to a person's ownership, Nechasai. You're turning it into, uh, it's a Hefza issue, not a Gavra issue. The Koshike bin Nechasai. And if somebody has the power to, um, to usher something in the future that's no longer in his possession, of course he should be allowed to do something when he ties it to his own ownership. So why is it that Rav and Shmuel only usher in a case of Nechasai? They should also usher in a case of Nechasim Elu. Since they do not, it cannot be that they hold that way. Vesu and furthermore, three lines up. Hatsanan, we have an explicit Mishnah. The Adam Oser Davar Shibir Shuso, the Kisha Yetzimir Shuso, that a person absolutely does have the power to ask for something that is currently in his possession, even when it exits his Bashus. Ditsnan, we are going to learn not only later on, four or five blocks from now, but also in Baba Kama. Haomer Libino, Kodem Sha'ataneneli. If a person says to his son, You are prohibited from having any benefit from me. What happens when the father <coughs> passes away? Is the son allowed to access the Yerusha or no? Mace says the Gemara, Yerashenu. Yes. Why? Last Rashi. Shalom Asar, Allah, Allah calls him on Chayna Chasim, Shalom. The father only Asar, the time then the possessions belong to him. Once he's dead, he owns nothing. However, what if the Lushan extended to Bechayev Uvemoso? What if the father said, you're not allowed to, to benefit from my nechassim while I'm alive and after I'm dead. Turn the page, says the Gemara, top of Roman base, imes lo yirashenu. So we explicitly see from here, not like the Gemara's suggestion that a person may not be allowed to ask for something when it leaves his possession, we see explicitly in the case of Yerusha that you absolutely can. So right now we have a two-part question against the, the Gemara's proposed mahala. One, based on logic, that Rav and Shmuel should have asked not only in a case of Nechasai, but also in a case of Nechas and Elu. And number two, we see explicitly in the case of Yerusha that a father can absolutely answer his, his child from having his Nechas even after he passes away. Yes? So, I, so the Ran, I believe in a very lengthy piece that I did not get all the way through, I believe deals with that. Um, but the real issue is that without this specific tonight, he automatically is Yorish because the father was Yerusha. So that's part of it. But the Gemara says explicitly here that a person can usher. So you've got this two-part kasha against the Gemara's proposed Mahala. So the Gemara now is going to give two answers, it, dealing with the second one first. Well, shiny hacha, you can't really ask from the case of Yerusha because because the father explicitly made a tanai that that, in court, that includes the time period after he passes away. However, says the Gemara, our second line, we call Malcolm Kasha. But we still have this logic question, the Chef Zagavra question that we have to deal with. So that how can it be that the Gemara is suggesting that Kol Adam, uh, what's the language? Uh, that Adam Osu Dabashi Rishuso, Afilu Kishiyitza Mirishuso, that we don't hold that way, says the Gemara, Ella, we have to learn it a different way. Benechasim elu, where a person says these specific nechasim are aser kule amalo pligi. Nobody argues, and everybody agrees that that you have the power to aser something based on the lashon of nechasim elu baruchatu adunoi eloheinu melech alam shekol mivo. Keep pligi. When do they argue? Benechasai. Rabu Shmuel Sabri Loshan on the Chasamil Loshan Loshan on the Nichse Nechasai. That Rab and Shmuel say that whether the Loshan is Nechasai or Nechasim Elu, it does not matter. Adam Oser, that a person has the power to Aser. And that's why Rab and Shmuel in the first part of the Gemara hold that even after a product, a, 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 a possession exits the Rishus of its owner, you're still allowed to Aser. 
Rabbi Yochanan Rabbi Shlaki Savri Nechasim Elu Adam Oser. Rabbi Yochanan Rabbi Shlaki says that when you make it about the the chefza, about the item, that a person can answer it. But Nechasai, but if you tie it to your possession, ain't Adam Oser. A person does not have the power to answer. Period. So the Gemara is going to want to know, Is it possible that Rav and Shmuel hold that there's no distinction between a Lashon of Nechasai and, and Nechasim Elu? But we have a Mishnah. We're going to come up to this Mishnah in a few blots. Somebody says, I am Usr from walking into your house. Beisecha. Sadecha she'ani lokeach, and I'm, I'm usher to walk into Sadecha, your field that I want to buy. So what happens? Meis osha mecharu la'acher mutter. That in that case, because the neder was tied to possession, that if the if the friend dies or sells that field to another, mutter, the guy who made the neder is then allowed to walk into his house and allowed to walk into his field because he tied it to possession. However, he said the buy is zesh ani nichnas sada zush ani lokeach. But if he ties it specifically to the home and not to its possession, or to the field and not to its possession, meis osher mecharu laacher aser. He's still aser. So how can the Gemara suggest that Rabbi Shmuel hold that whether the lotion is nechasai or nechasim elo that there's no difference that he can sell aser it? We see explicitly here that there is a difference, a big difference between mm-hmm. those two lashonos. Ella says the Gemara. We're going to completely rewrite this entire sugya and very simply answer as follows. Ki Amri Rabbi Yochanan Reish Lakish. Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish were not talking about the same Lashon and therefore not the same case as, uh, as the Rav and Shmuel. Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish were dealing with Nechasai. And that's why after the possession is over, he's, he's, the, the other party is allowed to access, allowed to eat. During Shemitah, the Rabu Shmuel, the Nechasim Elu, the Lopligi, and Rabbi Shmuel were more machmir, dealing with a case of Nechasim Elu, where the issue was specifically tied to the item and not tied to the ownership. And therefore, in reality, they were not arguing. Okay, two dots, eight lines up. What's that? Because you get the beautiful Pilpul and the Libu. Quote Harav Shlita. All right, is in your the talks today. So the, the Mishnah said that during Shemitah, you're not allowed to go into his field because of Drisas Regel, but you are allowed to eat from the Noto. So again, that was a lesson of the Mishnah. Asks the Gemara, Mishnah Dochamina Notos to Peridev Kereinun. What is the difference between the Peros, which are Hefker, and not going into the land, which are Anami Afkara? The land is also Hefker. Amar Ula, the Omdin Ilanos Hala Gvulin. Ula says that we're dealing specifically with trees that are on the border of the, the property of the one uh, who owns the field. And therefore, we're not dealing with a case where he has to go on the land. Amar Ula, uh, excuse me, and Reb Shimon ben El Yakim. Sure, it does, because it takes, the, it takes the land out of the equation. That's why I can't go on land even. Well, we, the answer is Risa. Well, because we're talking about Chazal or Makbid. And the reason that they specified a case of of uh, of Gvul, of of uh, of on the Gvul of the uh, the Notos is because they were they were Makbid because even though the land is Hefker, if you spend spend too much time on that land, you're over in Anisar of Hana, which you're not allowed to get. On this person's property, so Amrula So Rula says we're specifically talking about a case where the trees are on the border. Reb Shem ben El Yakim holds, and it is worth seeing Rashi inside here. Gezera Shema Yisha Ba'amida said it actually doesn't even really matter where the trees are. We're worried that you're going to stay there for too long. So look at the Rashi, uh, three lines up in the narrow lines. Reb Shem ben El Yakim Amar Ha Diktani Ochamina Notos. So within the opinion of Rabbi Shimon ben El-Yakim, of course, if we're talking about where the trees stand on the border, then you're allowed to take them. Because you're able to just reach up in the, in the Sacramento apple tree example and just grab it. 
but you're but if the trees aren't on the border, you're not allowed to go there. So according to Rabbi Shimon Ben Yakim, this gazera is even in place, even when the trees aren't on the border, and we don't necessarily need to be talking about a case where the trees are on the border. All right, let's do uh, the mission and then a little bit, and then the next Gemara. Somebody who makes a nedr not to have a from his friend should not should not lend to him and should not borrow from him. Lo venu, he should not loan money to him. Velo yil venu, and should not borrow money from him. Velo yim korlo, he should not sell to him. Velo yikach nimenu, nor should he buy from him. Now the Gemara is going to want to know some of these cases. I understand, but others, what's the hana? Specifically, in a case of borrowing, so bishleim atop of mem gimel amaral, bishleim alo yila venu. I understand that you should not loan money to him to come a honey lay because you're giving him an explicit benefit by giving him money to use to pay some bills, build a business, whatever he's using it for. And the lo yila venu, my come a honey lay, but to not borrow from him where you actually take his capital out of his hands. What? What? Benefit does the lender get in that case? And even if you say that you should not borrow from him, and you should not buy from him, Rashi explains that in these two cases, when uh, that maybe the benefit is that the lender is hoping that he'll lend out prutos of a lower value and get back money of a higher value, or he'll be able to stash his money in a place that is safe as a means of protecting his assets, the Kimishani Mine, so those are the benefits that he gets, but to not borrow from him, my Kamishani Mine. What benefit is this guy getting by lending something? When I lend something to my friend, it's not going to come back in any better condition. At best, it comes back in the same condition, and usually it comes back in worse condition. So what's the benefit? Rabbi Yosef Barchanina says, you know what, you're right. But we're talking about a case where they were more to from one another. And therefore, they're both usher to benefit. And that's why, even if one wouldn't benefit from lending the other or borrowing, the other would. Abaye Amar no. Abaye says, listen, you can go by the Mashma Mishnah that they we're really only talking about where the nether went one way. Mm-hmm. But he says, Gzera, Lishol, why can't he lend? Mishumla, why can't he borrow? Mishumla Hashu. He can't borrow. Am I getting these ba- these words backwards? No. He can't borrow. Uh, if he can't lend, because we're worried that he may borrow. Meaning, according to Abaye, each one of these scenarios is prohibited, even if you don't benefit, because we're worried that if you'll do that one, meaning you'll borrow from, you might come to lend to. Adkan, Daphne, and Bays have a wonderful day. You couldn't stop.